This is Peter Cook from ME1 TV. We're here to interview the godfather of the British blues, John Mayall. John, from Macclesfield to Mississippi. No, Macclesfield is, is rubbish. It, it, it crops up everywhere, like I'm from Macclesfield. In actual fact, I was only there for the time it took to give birth. So, you know, I, I lived all my life in Manchester, not, not Macclesfield, but anyway. Well, I thought I'd mention that. Mm. <laughs> from Manchester to Mississippi, then. there you go. More blues in Manchester than Macclesfield. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So tell me about sort of how you caught on to the blues. I know your father was a big influence, but I mean, it's well, a long way. In those days, getting hold of these records was difficult, wasn't it? Not really. No. People think that, but you know, everything. It was before LPs and everything like that. So uh, in Manchester, there was a, a record a record shop which specialised in jazz and blues, and so mm. so you know, you, you bought all your seventy eights there, and uh, there was enough released on the, on, on, you know, of American blues for me to, you know, build up a collection, at least, at least as much as I could afford on my wages, but, you know, so. So I went my own way with mainly concentrating on boogie woogie piano. Uh -huh. And you've been doing this, you've been with the blues for 80 years, I mean. Yep. What's changed, if anything? Um, well, it, it's, it's wonderfully gratifying that it's, it's caught on and got cemented into the fabric of, uh, of our, you know, the social climate. It's, it's, everybody knows what the blues is, you know, so, uh, and there's so many young, young musicians coming up who are all, you know, just obsessed with the blues, which is great. It's a generational thing. So it's had a longer life, and I suspect it will have a longer life than all the thin slicing of genres that's going on. I mean, because the blues spawned R and B. R and B yeah. now means something different, doesn't yeah, it? it? Does indeed. But the blues does carry on. It, it you know, it's it's quite evident that you know it, it's so so much part of uh, the world music now that, that there's no chance it will ever die out. But, you know, that's evidenced by the fact that there's so many young players and when they, you know, develop and, and get to get to a, an age where they're bringing their kids up on it, you know, it's just never ending. So what is it then about the cathartic release? What, what keeps it going from your point of view? Well, there's so much, so much music. I have the best band I've ever had, and we've mm. been together over five years now. And uh, you know, it's a, a pure joy to get to get together with them on tour. Um, you know, the creative spark is there, and um, you know, it's it's limitless. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if you'll forgive me, one of the things I've I, I figured out that I thought you were really good at is you're really good at spotting talent. I mean, you've had most of the world's best blues players <laughs> pass through your hands. Yeah. So how do you spot someone like that? I mean, it's either luck or judgment. So do you know how you did all that with Eric Clapton, all these players? Well, it's, it's definitely a, a band leader is, is, is someone who, who knows what he wants to, to embellish the music that he has in his head, you know, so... Um, you, you do mention Eric and all the others uh, who who followed that have become big names since. Um, you know that a band leader gets to choose who he wants to play and who he thinks will fit. Um, you know, and Eric obviously had the um, the background of listening to the right records and developing his style. And it's the same with all the others. You know, so. Um, people get mystified by it, but how, how does he do it and all that? But well, it's like a laboratory, but, isn't it? They've all, they've all come to the laboratory, you know, they go through, they come out the other yeah, side, yeah. and they're off. Um, but, you know, I give, I give if, I've, if I choose someone from whatever instrument it is, the, you, the reason you've chosen him is for the talent that he has, so mm. you want to showcase that. And in the course of showcasing their talent, uh, it causes them to develop their own style. I looked at your tour schedule, you're out every night. You're out more nights than I am, and I'm not quite your age yet. <laughs> so what keeps you going? Well, first of all, you have to have to be healthy in order to <clears> give your best. Uh, so I'm in the fortunate position of having good health and energy. And uh, we love what we do. It's a creative force that, uh, that, that, that we, we love and we, we like to work every night. If you have a day off, it, you're just sitting around in the hotel room, you know, twiddling your thumbs and, you know, waiting to get on with it. So that's why I insist that to agents, you know, try and book every night on a tour. 
And they certainly do, don't they? There's hardly any gap. I mean, we're here yeah, in Dartford tonight, yeah. which is where I worked for 20 years. And, yeah. uh, you know, you're in the best spot in, spot in Dartford, in my humble opinion. Yeah. There's not much to go to outside yeah. afterwards. But, right. uh, are you going on to a, a, an all-night party after this? I don't do parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I thought it might be uh, exhausting enough to be on stage. So no, it's what, not what exhausting, it's, no, it's energising is yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's not exhausting in the least because it's uh, you, you know you wait all day or you, you, whatever travels you're going through which are usually quite extensive to get from one place to the other but once you're there the, the music is the reward at the end of it all you know and so, it's, so it's, it's what, what's your sort of selection of material you're going to draw from tonight is it the whole of your catalogue or some well, of the newer you material know, that we've you've... got we've got about 40 or 45 songs that we we know at the moment and uh, we do 12 of those every night but it's a different a different a different 12 yeah a different okay. 12 and uh, you know so so people uh, could go to lots of dates and still, yeah, yeah. still not fact, see them on this, on this tour we've had people who uh, showing up for, this is saying well this is my third one on this tour right, and, yeah. and they can expect you know to, to have some different uh, different tunes uh, attacked all right uh, and multi-instrumentalist um did you, were you taught? Did you just hear it? How did you learn to, to, to play all those instruments? Well, I can't read or write music, so it's just self-taught, really, you know, so I bumble through it, and, uh, you know, so I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't play a scale on any instrument, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, so you just I, do heard, the, I do the best I can. You, you know? just heard it, and, and you uh, sat there patiently working it out, is that...? Not, not particularly. No, it just I came to you? I don't... I don't, you know, when I learned piano, I didn't have a piano, so I used to <laughs> go and torture other people, uh, you know, see, can I use your piano for the for the day or whatever. And tell us about your new album. The Special Life is is really great because uh, it, it it's a, a very hardcore blues album, and um, it, it's a, a, a good example of what we've been playing for the last five years with mm -hmm. these guys, and it's um, it's a really nice selection of tunes which honour. A lot, a lot of blues artists who are perhaps a little lesser known than the major ones, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, Greg, Greg and uh, Greg Ars, the bass player, and Rocky Athos came up with a, a, a tune on there, one of theirs. So, you know, it's just a, it's a well-rounded album, I think, and we cover very many different styles of blues. So this has come from the stage to the studio and not from the studio to the stage. You've been exactly. playing the material and yeah. and letting it actually become live before well, you... Well, no, it's the other way around, really, oh, I mean, okay. because we play it play so much, but if we're going to record an album, I usually uh, make the selection of songs I want to do and uh, send a, a, a CD to the guys, because, uh, you know, Greg and, and Jay are in Chicago and Rocky's in Texas, so... You know, I send them a CD of the of the ones that I'm planning to do, and then when we get together, we you know we knock them around for uh, a couple of hours, you know, mm -hmm. and they just fall then. together, and then just record them. So the album took three days to do. And, uh, so you didn't need a chateau in, in France for that. They're then. all the they're all you know first takes. So yeah. If, if they're going to work out, you know. You so it's raw. The, you got to capture the life yeah. the life feel of it, the energy. John Mayle, thank you very, very much. All right, well, it's a pleasure. Okay. Now we can go to work. <laughs> <laughs>